Hi, my name is Morley Robbins. I'm the founder of the Root Cause Protocol. What I'd like to do in this brief video is drill into the hidden truth of iron metabolism. A lot of confusion about uh, anemia and iron deficiency anemia and what's really going on. And I want to share just a few slides to give you a broader perspective of what's going on. So on, on the slide is a new building in London. It's called the Shard and it's 95 stories high. It's a really big building, obviously. It, and right next to it is a small five-story building. So it's a big difference, 95 stories versus five stories. Well, think of it in the context of 95% of your focus is on the shard, 5% is on that auxiliary building. So just think about that 95%, 5%, okay? Because that's really what drives iron metabolism are those two numbers, 95% and 5%. 95% of our iron metabolism is a recycling program. Every day, we're having to turn over 200 billion red blood cells. It's 2.5 million per second. And nobody talks about it. But that's where 95% of the daily iron requirement is focused on recycling, breaking down existing red blood cells, tearing them apart, literally, getting access to the iron and recycling that iron, getting it back to the bone marrow, where at the same blistering pace, two and a half million red blood cells, red blood cells a second are being made. And the truth of the matter is only 5% of the daily iron requirement comes by restoring the amount of iron that we need in our body. That's, it's actually one milligram a day. And we need 24 milligrams to support the recycling system. So what's, what's absolutely amazing to think about is that just one red blood cell has a billion, a billion atoms of iron. One red blood cell, and we're turning over two and a half million per second. So it's a very uh, significant event to be restoring this. And this is what drives iron metabolism, is this 95%, 5%. 95% is on recycling, 5% is on restoring. And all of the optics in nutrition and in medicine, especially in hematology, is getting you to believe that you have to restore 20 some milligrams of iron every day. No, you don't. You gotta focus on the recycling side. And the recycling side is really run by your spleen. It's not run by the liver. It's run by the spleen. It's absolutely amazing. So here's a picture. It's a little busy. I get that. But this is the simple lie versus the complex truth. And what this is going to highlight is where the real activity is in your iron metabolism. What you've got up in the top left-hand corner is the liver. And they're putting particular emphasis on the iron hormone called hepcidin. And you can see if you follow the arrows, there's three arrows. And one arrow is focusing on, and, there, and all three of those arrows actually are focusing on ferroportin. It's a very, very important doorway that allows iron to get out of the cell. Ferroportin, iron doorway. And ferroportin has a relationship with hepcidin. And what does hepcidin do? Well, it, it particularly gets you focused on the dietary side of your iron. And what you also need to understand is that there's recycling macrophages. Now, the, the focus of conventional nutrition and medicine is getting you to believe that 95% Actually, they would probably tell you 100%, but 95% is on absorbing iron in, in your diet, and 5% comes by way of these recycling macrophages. 
And what's a macrophage? It's a Pac-Man that gobbles up dying red blood cells, but also gobbles up pathogens and other, other entities inside our body. But the key is, what I want you to understand is that this is an inaccurate depiction of how your body works. 95% of iron metabolism is not dietary iron. Absolutely not dietary iron. And what you need to understand is that hepcidin's focus inside our body is really to shut down this ferroportin protein, this ferroportin doorway. And they don't like to tell you about that. And when does, when does hepcidin rise? Well, it's, it's actually amazing. It, it, it rises under three different conditions predominantly. The two that they always talk about are it rises when there's a lot of iron around and it rises when there's infections or inflammation, okay? And what does, what does hepcidin do? It shuts down that doorway to keep the iron inside the tissue so the pathogens can't get it. But it turns out there's a third driver for this hormone, and it's called stress. Know anybody under stress, right? We're all under stress. And so don't assume that you, because of your stress level, that your body is turning over these red blood cells in a normal manner, because it's not. And this is where the, the real complication is in this process. And what they don't talk to you about is ceruloplasma. That's the copper protein that has this powerful influence over iron and oxygen inside our body. And it has eight atoms of copper inside it. Ceruloplasm is like a tank with eight soldiers inside it. It's really a very sophisticated protein that most folks don't know about. And most folks, practitioners, don't know about. And so what we're seeking to do here in the root cause protocol is get you to understand the deeper levels of activity that are taking place. It's not not complicated. It's just pulling back the curtain. And how do we spell curtain? C-U, right? And so the, the whole point is to get you to realize that that ceruloplasm protein is what allows iron to come out of the ferroportin doorway two and a half times faster in its presence. That's a big deal, is to accelerate and move that iron quickly. It isn't about eating a lot of iron. It's about moving that iron because the, the, the truth of the matter is when we run through these um, images, again, that is not the split. That's not the 95-5. The truth of the matter is 95% of iron metabolism is with those macrophages from the spleen, turning over that two and a half million red blood cells per second. And only 5% of your daily iron requirement, five, it's only one milligram. Again, the totality of iron you need every day, 25 milligrams. How long have we known this? Oh, since 1946. Max Weintraub published a very important letter to the editor and pointed out it's actually 24.4, but I like to round up, make it easy for people. And so it's 24 milligrams come from the recycling system, one milligram is coming from your mouth. And that was also affirmed by two luminary UK-based uh, nutritionist and a, a pediatrician and a, a biochemist nutritionist, um, McCants and Whittison, who whose work is in their 18th edition now, some, uh, gosh, 70 years later. Uh, so McCants and Whittison were the ones that identified the one milligram. One milligram of iron needed in our diet, 24 on the recycling system. So just wanted to reinforce that. I know that's new information. It's very disruptive. But if you're looking to really better understand this, please go to our website, rcp123.org. Join our community. If you want to get trained in this, join our institute. Uh, but we're thrilled to have you be a part of this community and take the time to, to learn this information. So thank you very much.